All right, guys, so today we're gonna to answer the question, will eating fat make my liver fat? Okay, I did have a question from someone that wanted to know about this. They were concerned about this. I'm eating this ketogenic diet. It's so high in fat. Isn't that gonna cause a fatty liver, okay? Well, let's just talk about the number one cause of a fatty liver would be alcohol. Okay, that's number one. Number two would be fructose, high fructose corn syrup. All right, number three would be high carb diets. But let's go to the research and see what that says, okay? Well, I was only able to find one study, okay, on this topic. There's actually not a lot of data out there on this. Uh, there's actually no studies that I could find other than this one. So let's, let's go ahead and cover it. And this is titled, The Influence of Dietary Fat on Liver Fat Accumulation. Okay, I'll put a link down below so you can check it out. It's a little confusing, so I'm gonna to try to kind of go through it. It says, we identified that protein and cholesterol consumption were associated with elevated risk whereas consumption of carbohydrates was associated with a decreased risk of hospitalization or death related to cirrhosis or liver cancer. So they didn't really mention a fatty liver. They kind of stuck in the cirrhosis and liver cancer. So I don't really know if they're talking about a fatty liver or cirrhosis or cancer. But they did say that they identified um, protein and cholesterol consumption. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep moving on says the strong association between cholesterol intake and cirrhosis or liver cancer, I don't know why they're not saying a fatty liver, is potentially our study's most important finding. Now in rabbits and in mice, a high cholesterol diet has been shown to induce a fatty liver inflammation and fibrosis. All right, they did bring that up. A high cholesterol diet will cause a fatty liver inflammation and fibrosis in rabbits and mice, okay? All right, so I need to bring up what these mice and rabbits ate, okay? That's very, very important. The high cholesterol, high fat diet uh, really was a high cholesterol and fat slash high sugar diet. It was high in sucrose, it was high in maltodextrose, and it was high in dextrose itself, which is a synthetic sugar, okay? So anytime you mix sugar with fat, you're gonna create a fatty liver. So it wasn't just a purely fat diet with low carb. So the problem is no, there's no standard definition of what a high fat diet is um, in these studies. That is a big problem. Um, and then as far as the rabbit, um, I, I couldn't get the exact formula, but I, what I did find is they put the rabbit on peanut oil, corn oil, coconut oil, sucrose, and cornstarch. Okay, so we know that, which again, it's like, who's gonna consume that? And if they did, they would probably get a lot of liver problems. Okay. We are not aware of any other human studies linking cholesterol intake to human liver disease. Wow, this is the only one, I guess. Our finding that dietary cholesterol, but not serum cholesterol, was associated with cirrhosis or liver cancer could have profound implications if confirmed by other studies. Okay, now I just wanna bring up one point. They're talking about dietary cholesterol, not serum cholesterol. So in other words, they found that people with high cholesterol in the blood did not create these problems. It was not associated with these problems. It was only the increase in intake. But we, all, we already know what they were intaking. The mice chow, the rabbit food was actually a high carb diet. Okay, for example, it could suggest that drugs blocking intestinal cholesterol absorption could have a more beneficial effect to the liver than drugs blocking hepatic cholesterol synthesis. <laughs> like, I don't know why they're bringing up the drug thing now, or they're kind of hinting that, hey, you know, we can use drugs to fix this problem. Let's move on, check this out. It says, we are not aware of any studies investigating the effects of carbohydrate intake on the progression of liver disease in humans. Well, there sure is a heck of a lot of studies out there, and I will put the links down below uh, showing that a high carb diet will affect the liver and actually even cause a fatty liver. But it goes on to say this, contrary to our findings, the recent study has found that patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease consumed two to three times more fructose than the controls, which may be linked to the development of a fatty liver, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it goes on to say, our data did not allow us to determine the specific fructose intake so basically, they said they're not aware of any studies, but then they actually, they said there are studies, but they didn't evaluate fructose. Okay, whatever. All right. 
we did not find any association between dietary intake of saturated fatty acids or the monosaturated fatty acids, oleic acid, and cirrhosis, or liver cancer. So that's totally confusing because uh, I thought they said they did find it, but I guess what they're differentiating is they found high cholesterol diets might be apparently different than high saturated fatty diets. This is really confusing because on one part of it talks about a high cholesterol diet, and this says a diet high in saturated fat. So there must be maybe two different diets they're using. I have no idea. So this is a very confusing study, and I really don't put a lot of credibility in this study, but to really imply that consuming higher amounts of fat are gonna cause a fatty liver are misleading simply because the ketogenic diet is a low carb diet. And this is the most important thing you need to know. If you consume higher fats, yet keep your carbs low, you are gonna be protected against getting a fatty liver, okay? But if you actually add the carbs in here, that is going to cause the problem. Because as you increase insulin from the carbohydrates, okay, what you're gonna do is you're gonna force fat to go into the fat cell to the point where it's saturated and it's filled up, there's no more space there but then it's gonna spill off into the organs and around the organs as well. And that's called visceral fat. And then with that, you start developing a fatty liver. So when you overwhelm the body with too much carbohydrate, that carbohydrate, if it's not burned up, needs to get stored. And if there's no more spaces, it will go in the liver. And that's really what's behind a fatty liver. And the reason I'm saying that is because when you put a person on the healthy keto plan, you improve a fatty liver, okay? Why? Because you lower the carbs. You force the body to use its own store of fat. So just think about what's happening when you do ketosis. You're mobilizing fat and 40% of the fat is turning into ketones, okay? So it's the process of burning fat. So I mean, if you had a fatty liver, wouldn't you wanna burn up the fat and use this stored fat as energy? Whether you consume more fat or less fat is really dependent on this carbohydrate amount. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it, and here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before